What's up, everyone? And welcome to That Crypto Hustle, a community podcast and a one-stop shop where visionaries, entrepreneurs, and hustlers share their blockchain and cryptocurrency expertise. I'm your host, Luna Vega, a digital marketer turned crypto addict, and my goal is to help spread blockchain and cryptocurrency awareness, all while fostering collaboration between all of us. If you dig the show, make sure to give us a review on iTunes, all while following us on Instagram, YouTube, and or Twitter. Let's do this. Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome to another episode of That Crypto Hustle Podcast. One of big topics that we talk about within the community is mass adoption of cryptocurrency. And with all the scams that happened in 2017, the bear market, needless to say, things have drastically slowed down. So what will be the next big milestone which will help mass adoption? Well, in today's episode, I've invited Yasin Yankov, who's an engineer manager at PaySaf, to Pay safe, sorry about that. Uh, uh, to discuss how payment gateways might be the extra, the next frontier to mass adoption and more. Hey, what's up? How's it going, Yasin? Thanks for joining me today. Hey, of course. Thanks, thanks for having me. It's uh, yeah, it's been great. Uh, so far, so good. I mean, uh, pretty, pretty intense period for us as a big enterprise in the beginning of the year. So yeah. So, so before, pretty, before pretty interesting. Before we get started, I'd love to know what uh, PaySafe what PaySafe is all about. For some reason, I can't say that right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it's like getting me tongue twisted for whatever reason. But uh, so we'd love to hear more about the actual product that is PaySafe. And you also mentioned yep. that you're also helping as far as including a cryptocurrency component. So can you just tell us a little yep. bit more? Yeah, so uh, of course, uh, basically PaySafe is a, is, a, is a global company, uh, a fintech company focused on primarily two business, um, major businesses. So the first one is uh, we have two products, uh, actually not two, but several digital wallet products. Uh, the primary ones are, have been Skrill and the Teller, uh, pretty um, popular digital wallet products within the high risk uh, transactions space uh, for sports betting, gambling, CAFEX, etc. Uh, and the same time, we we'll have some traditional, more traditional, more low risk um, oriented business in terms of uh, payment processing APIs and payment processing gateways. Um, so uh, that's the two major things which we do at PaySafe. So we have uh, uh, digital wallet products, we have uh, pro products, uh, API products for including, for integrating merchants within the payment processing industry. Um, and, and yeah, basically that's what we do. We're more than 3,000 people um, spread into several locations around the world. So pretty, pretty big company. That's amazing. And it's such an interesting industry because like we were discussing, there's such a huge monopoly when it comes to payment gateway with Visa and MasterCard. So what are you guys doing to kind of address that? Yeah, so um, basically, um, as you've mentioned, it, Visa and MasterCard, they've been building for those, I don't know, more, more than uh, 15 years or already they've been building this monopoly uh by having both sides of the of, of the market right so they've been super um uh super uh like they, they were doing super well in terms of integrating merchants integrating banks and etc um and at the same time uh making consumer like pretty good consumer um relationship integrating with consumer products well and and and, and, and that this this actually is uh, the, the the key to success, basically managing the two sides of uh, of the market, and 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 when we talk about crypto, uh, I'm I'm particularly excited about uh, about the consumer experience uh, within crypto, which is uh, still uh, far from from uh, from perfect, far from uh, um, usable from the ordinary customer, uh, but 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 again, uh, comparing to 2013, it's a lot better. Right. Yes. I mean, we have a variety of, of, of wallets and etc. But if you think about it, in order to achieve this uh, adoption and make sure that uh, crypto somehow um, start being a, a, comp a, comp a competitor for, for Visa and MasterCard to those uh, payment gateways, uh, the other 
um, uh, major thing which needs to be done is basically manage the, the, the merchant side and, and do uh, products which are very easy to be used by banks, by, by merchants, um, to, 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 to be standardized, for, for, to be regulated, and, and, and etc. And that's actually a, a, a key to mass adoption uh, on, a, on a two-sided market, which is the, the payments, right? Uh, you need to have those very good connections and on a very well, uh, very like strong connections to the consumer, of course, with um, good consumer products. But you also need to invest a lot in, 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 in having a, a connection to merchants, to a bu- building something which they can easily use, they can easily integrate and adopt. Uh, and, uh, and, and at the same time, uh, uh, like both connection with regulators or the, 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 the specific crypto products or cryptocurrencies could be regulated in specific markets. Yeah, because um, right now, right now, the only incentive that individuals have in getting into the crypto market is either trading or gamers. I mean, is there yeah. any other use cases at this point? And I mean, obviously, there's payment, but that's more for casinos mm-hmm. and other and other kind of vendors. But you're yeah. absolutely right. We need to figure out other incentive, and that could be uh, competing with Visa and Mastercard, which I agree, it's going to probably take a while. Is there any uh, other? Is there any other use cases in your opinion? Because I feel like trading. The problem with it is that it's not. It's appealing only to a certain percentage of the population, and perhaps crypto will help change that. But after yeah. the scams last year, it's probably going to be hard for individuals to feel safe because the market is so volatile. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it, well, when it comes to trading, uh, I, I, I'm really uh, within this trading, specifically within this trading thing, uh, bu- building uh, a very simple like um, tools for amateur traders within Skrill and Ether, basically our our bold digital wallet products. Uh, but when it comes to trading, uh, we need to somehow separate things from um, a retail and amateur trading, basically, to the, for the retail consumer and, 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 and institutional trading, right? Agreed. Uh, yeah. and, and, and in terms of, of uh, institutional tr- trading, there's some specific things which needs to happen uh, in order to, 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 to just open... Uh, the door for reaching a mass adoption. And, and because mass adoption for most of those cryptocurrencies means stabilizing the price. Uh, and, and stabilizing the price uh, means that we need to have uh, enough trading on a, on a basically supply and demand, like enough in terms of volumes, like pretty big volumes of, of trading in terms of supply and demand um, so that the, the, the currency uh, w- w- would then stop being that volatile uh and and and, and definitely um on, on the institutional basis there's uh, uh, a lot uh, going on now uh, we see etfs and then basically a lot of etfs are trying to to push uh for for approval to within the, the states from sec uh, more and more institutional uh, customers are, are getting into crypto in terms of investment banks and etc. So this is a this is a that's a good step. Uh, on on the retail side, of course, uh, now it's uh, it's been quite chilly, yeah. And then specifically after the the, 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 the 2017 and the year of ICOs, as you already mentioned, it's been quite chilly. Um, and, and, and in order to help somehow finding a, a, a use case. Um, I, I think probably we will need to first stabilize the price somehow, or we will need to have a product like a stable coin uh, for, for this. Because it's just in, in terms of, 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 of crypto, uh, whatever crypto product or whatever crypto token um, being a currency means that the, the, pr- the price should be stable, right? And, and um, stable coins are actually trying to do this. Yeah, They're so that was, to... that was going to be my question. Like, what? Because I, I know there's just a lot of uh, yeah. negative connotation around stable coins. So, yeah. I mean, what, uh, what do you think is the benefit? So, uh, I, I think the benefit currently, the way we, we, we observe the benefit is uh, again because uh, we, we're just looking at the benefit from the consumer side and on the on the on the merchant and basically on the business side, uh, stable coins 
would widely be uh, used now and, and had been adopted by another crypto related businesses like crypto exchanges uh, on the retail of course it's uh, it's cool and customers started to, to just like most of those stable coins like USDT USDC they've um, they catched up quite quickly and a lot more actually uh, uh, would be born uh, in probably in the next uh, a, a couple of, a couple of months and even 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 years uh, but again on on the merchant side um, if let's say and I'm, I'm a merchant, I'm a, I'm a, I have an e-commerce shop or I have a, a bakery or whatever, why should I be uh, accepting the stable coin? And how, even if I decide to start accepting the stable coins for, 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 for payments, uh, what will be my infrastructure and what will be my ecosystem around this uh, stable coin so that I can easily, let's say, trade back to fiat or uh, even being able to pay directly uh, with stable coin to uh, to my supply chain, right? Um, that's that's uh, that's why stable coins are still not there. It's just because on the merchant side, uh, it's hard to convince merchants to start using crypto. Uh, first, because it's uh, a technology which is uh, which is complex. Uh, it needs a couple of layers um, in terms of user experience for those merchants to, to start using it, and they need to to be able. They, they just need to we have a way to easily exit or easily pay with it, right? So that they can just like use the funds which they um, they received as a payment from the consumer. So uh, I think that's why, because for, for exchanges, it's very easy to use the stable coins. Mm -hmm. They basically, um, uh, they, they basically um, push a lot in terms of stable coins adoption. Even Coinbase, if you if you if you look at it, they've been adding uh, trading pairs against fiat currencies. Now, now they're actively adding uh, trading pairs against stable coins. So I think uh, there there should be a push at some point on the merchant side so that the stable coin can actually um, solve this problem. Uh, but but it's it's interesting because um, it's stable uh, as a as a concept is a st there, there's a, a stabilized price there so it's it will be a lot easier for average consumers like non-crypto savvy people to, to 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 embrace it to to try it to start using it to to transact with it uh it's just that th there will be like a lot of, of of work on the merchant side uh so that we can um uh, we can see um more standard like payment use cases let's say yeah that's and, that's and probably gonna option. be that's probably gonna be later in the timeline i have to agree with you as far as merchant ado merchants adopting crypto unless unless you're a casino like you mentioned or other industries i guess the porn industry as well they have more more uh incentive in using cryptocurrencies for the privacy aspect of things yeah, that's really, yeah, yeah. So that's really exactly. interesting. I mean, and I also think that's why cryptocurrency can get such a bad rep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think if uh, from a closed loop perspective, mm -hmm. uh, the I, I can just give a, I don't know, uh, like a, my idea for this is for small service businesses uh, would be embracing the idea of cryptocurrencies first because uh, the... And of course, that would be some more tech savvy people, like small businesses for from people which which are like a lot more tech savvy, uh, just because uh, they would be able to just pay uh, their employees um, with stable coins. And of course, this can close the loop, right? So if I'm an employee of a of a merchant or of a business um, which accepts stable coin, then I. I can receive my, like a part of my payroll or my total payroll within stablecoin, and for small businesses to embrace it will be a lot easier, right? So because it's just uh, not that bureaucratic, it's a lot easier oper inter operationally to pay uh, within a small business environment. So I, I actually think that small service businesses will be the first to embrace and and, and start uh, accepting uh, crypto um, and revol revolutionize this uh, on the merchant side. And also, do you think, uh, I mean, taxes could also be a huge component of it, correct? Yeah. Or just like, I mean, yeah. fees in general. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so fees, uh, if you don't exit the ecosystem, mm -hmm. there will be a huge advantage. And that's, again, why small small businesses would, be, uh, would try to benefit on it. Uh, if they find a way so that they, they're not exiting the crypto ecosystem and they don't 
need to pay these huge fiat fees, either to payment gateways or banks or etc. Uh, that would be a huge advantage, right? Like a huge saving in terms of, uh, of, of, of uh, operational expense. Uh, so, so definitely on, on, on the fee perspective, if, uh, if you still need to exit and, and, and uh, the ecosystem and go to fiat, it's actually, I don't know why people are talking about that it's cheap. It's actually more expensive than, to than, exit than enter, fiat. Right? Yeah, yeah, to exit fiat. Like uh, if yeah. you need to, yeah, because the fees if you are don't crazy. Have this, yeah, the Bitcoin yeah. fees and yeah. It, exactly. And, and, and even if you're using some more um, like like, um, uh, like a newer technology and, and a stable coin, it, it's to, there's still be the case for you to exit via, I don't know, bank wire, probably pay bank uh, banking fee or even exit uh, um, uh, through a credit card, paying bring credit card fee. If you're exiting through a specific exchange, you might be paying even more on top of all those like uh, gateway fees. So it's it's uh, it's still quite expensive to to, to exit um, uh, the, the ecosystem on a frequent basis. Uh, so the key here is to basically small services start embracing uh, and, and and making sure they can just uh, pay um, employees in payroll, pay uh, another small small services so that they can uh, keep the loop closed and don't exit the crypto ecosystem. That, that that's when it's extremely cheaper. Yeah, but I feel like for that to happen, perhaps the first step would have to be individuals feeling more comfortable with crypto. And I mean, like you mentioned, your theory is that having stable coins could help that. Mm -hmm. And then once everyone is okay with getting paid in stable coins at that point, merchants probably yep. would embrace it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, and I think that's why I, I think trading is so crucial part of it because, um, People are, are, are observing this crazy uh, volumes in, in terms of trading against uh, against table coins, and, and those uh, trading businesses uh, helps people uh, on an amateur level or on an advanced level to, to basically enter the market and make their first steps. So trading is crucial, and having a very very good trading experience or 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 or, or like a a, a, a simple wallet buy or, or sell experience, exchange experience is crucial for, for, for the average consumer because uh, the probability for your first transaction in crypto and your first step uh, within crypto, uh, the probability for it to be on a trading platform, on a wallet uh, or, or, or an exchange is, 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 is very, very high for now. Well, most, uh, most retail investor last year just bought a few coins and yeah. have been probably holding is my gut reaction, and or, or they finally or they sold. But I mean, I think one of the problem, and I mean, I'd love to know if you guys have statistics statistics about the following, whether or not there's been more of an interest an interest about trading since cryptocurrency and perhaps 2017. Yeah. The problem. Yeah, there's been. There's yeah, there has been. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to know about that, just because I feel like one of the problem with trading is that you're right, you need to have some form of like former education in order yep. to know, to feel comfortable day trading at the very least. Yeah, and it's it's actually, it's funny because uh, most of the people uh, think uh, of 2017 as a whole year of, 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 of like a huge gains, right? And yeah. if you look at the volumes, basically the entire year prior to, to, to October and November, it's actually... The, the volumes are, are smaller than what's happened on the entire 2018. So uh, I'll, I'll just take Bitcoin as an example because it's, you know, the most popular ones. So it's uh, all of the all, all the trading volumes. They, they've been going uh, roughly around between a million and two to, to, to the late 2017. Then it's exponentially grew up to 18, 20 mil, right? And now it's, it's, it's getting back to five. Five, six mil, seven mil, depending on on the on the day, and that's basically uh, they, uh, sorry, um, billion, not, not million, but billion, seven billion, um, in terms of a, of a daily volume. So we still, uh, if we somehow connect 2017 to what's happening now, and, and even 2018, we're 500 um, percent uh, an increase of the trading volume, and that's only for uh, like for Bitcoin, uh, and it, it's just that. There's been super, super high increase for those 
six, seven weeks, uh, starting from the, 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 the mid-November to the end of December, where trading volumes like got up to 20, 25 billion uh, a day, uh, which somehow made people feel that something very, very big had, had been going on for the entire year. But it was not for the entire year. It was basically just for a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, it was just like catching up. And now we're 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 in a in a very like good position in terms of um, of where the trading is. Uh, so uh, I think basically um, where, where what will happen is we'll probably have one more year uh, going roughly in, in on, on on this either bearish or or even flat market, and there will be another push. Either that will be from an institutional level, either that will be. Um, on, a, on, 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 on another like a very strong consumer product uh, uh, popping up uh, and, and the consumer experience would even be, be, be better than and I, I think holders holler, are, 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 are of course like some, some, some new traders came 2017 and holders are present there, there's been present, uh, pretty, like serious present holders but at the same time on the consumer basis, six. There's so many products which push those um, those holders and and push those those amateur um, uh, crypto traders to exchange. So many of those, and then they just and they're doing it because they that's their business model. They they need the people to 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 exchange back to fiat and and forth. So I don't think there there will be like too much holding. Um, going on for for the next couple of couple of months or even uh, a year. It's just that uh, trading will probably very slowly go up, uh, waiting or or just be flat for, for 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 the next couple of couple of months, waiting for the next big event to happen. Yeah, no, I well, I guess what I'm really interested in understanding is why are trading volumes higher now considering there's probably less retail investor is it because instant institutional funds are coming yeah, in yeah it's, it's just because yeah it's just because of institutions uh like institutional funds are coming in there's been those uh, like um big players uh which are not really the average guy uh, uh they've been into bit the bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency prior to this boom and now they're just trying to to trade and 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 and, and, and speculate on the market uh, with just higher uh, with higher margins with higher amounts. So that's why it's just the volume is uh, is, uh, is 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 bigger than what happened in in, in 2017. And of course, the adoption in terms of people uh, coming into the to the to the ecosystem, the crypto ecosystem, it's. It's in an uprise. I mean, it's not some some something similar, or even barely similar to what happened in 2017. But still, a lot of new products come come um, uh, targeting specifically people who, who who were never been into crypto, and they starting doing these small amounts. Even for us, if you think about Screw and Neteller, we started this product in the mid of uh, 2018, and we're just pushing and pushing for those um, non-crypto related customers to, to just do their first steps within crypto. Uh, so I think that's, that's, that's another like uh, reason why. There's been some, some increase in terms of, uh, of uh, amateurs or non-crypto holders entering the market. That's really interesting. So, I mean, you already talked about stablecoin and you think that will be important to generate more trust around crypto, but... Um, if we just take stablecoin aside, is there anything else that can be done, in your opinion? I mean, institutions will probably help, yeah. mm -hmm. but I'm just like wondering, like, what, what, I mean, because an another argument, and I don't know if you, if you deal with this, that I get along, that I end up having with friends of mine who are not necessarily in the community, is not understanding, so that this is where like uh, security tokens come in, but essentially not understanding that Bitcoin is not backed up by ne by anything essentially. Yeah. yeah. And so for for them to understand that concept, like that, even though it's not backed up with anything, it still has value. Like so, how how yeah. do you think we're gonna? And perhaps gaming is what will help sort of um, make people understand like the intrinsic value of Bitcoin. But like, what's your what's your opinion about the following? 
Um, I, I actually, I, I do think that there's a lot of education going on lately uh, in terms of, uh, of of what crypto is, specific cryptocurrencies. Uh, some even some some of the major uh, players started uh, some rewards um, and, and loyalty programs uh, uh, after uh, just going after people who never been into crypto and, and wanting them to to be educated about what Bitcoin is and etc. So. Uh, um, I think one of the major things, uh, actually, let's just leave stablecoins aside, is uh, how we deal with regulation in terms of, uh, let's say, KYC, uh, KYB, um, compliance, uh, and, and etc. In, in order for this to, 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 to reach mass adoption, we need to have a proper way to share KYC data. Uh, and that's something which uh, sounds very, very like far. Uh, from most of the people who are within crypto, but from, from the uh, for me as somebody who has been working in the payment space for quite a while, uh, making sure that you easily um, get the the, 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 the the into the process of know your customer for your customers, it's it's actually crucial. So making sure that customers can verify or businesses can verify customers very quickly, they can share this uh, uh, this identity and, and this ver- verification uh, KYC with another business which the customers have relation uh, have a relationship with and and and, and etc that's a, that will be crucial and, and and again would probably come from the trading platforms like i don't know coinbase bitstamp some our wallets and etc they, 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 there should be something uh happening in terms of sharing kyc so that we can make it easier for the customer to just um, verify and, and make their first steps um uh, and and on, a, on a compliance and a regulatory level, there's still a lot of, of going on. There there there's been some companies uh, that are, who are trying to tackle the space of of uh, of uh, uh, figuring out fraud uh, within uh, blockchains, uh, scan transactions for uh, risk profiles of transactions and etc. So this thing can uh, should and can mature and actually should mature um, um, a bit. Uh, prior to to, to 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 a mainstream adoption, right? Because um, governments uh, would, would just not allow uh, mass adoption uh, for consumers prior to to, to 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 those products and those cryptocurrencies meeting some some basic regulatory standard. Uh, and and I think that's that's already been happening. Yeah. So it's, it's just uh, yeah, slowly but sh- but surely we're getting there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's something which I, I believe it's it's a key for, for mass adoption. Just making sure that we easily build on top of of, of, of um, crypto, uh, easily build shared KYC data, making sure that customers can easily um, uh, use whatever crypto service they would like or, or crypto platform. It's it's just a key for for for, for them to make their first steps there. And of course, education, as I mentioned. I would love to know at PaySafe specifically, uh, what are you what are you guys excited about when it comes to cryptocurrency? What are some of the? I mean, I know you already mentioned the yep. exchanger aspect of it, but what is sort of the yep. vision? So uh, we 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 we're, we're excited for several things uh, about several things. Basically, we're excited about. Um, about exchange and trading we're excited about consumer products uh, for crypto uh, we're excited about uh, making the, uh, our customers and basically making the consumer the digital wallet consumer uh, use crypto and make their first steps within crypto right so that would mean either having some crypto uh, exchanging it for, for, for or paying a merchant exchanging it through prepaid cards um uh, I don't know. Uh, use the, the P2P sense so that they can send crypto, uh, and and basically the whole customer consumer experience um, uh, for crypto is something which we're very very excited about. Uh, on the other half, of course, on the payments uh, processing side, we're excited about stable coins. We're excited about decentralized protocols, um, the securities, of course, and and some we we're, we're monitoring those very very closely. Stable coins is something which we're very very excited about. Uh, in particular, uh, so yeah, I, um, I I think that summarizes quite a bit. Would you guys create your own stablecoin? Is that something that you're thinking uh, about? 
Yeah, we we're actually uh, we're we're still in in in, in research phase uh, on this. Uh, we might. Uh, I don't I don't still uh, have this like hundred percent that we 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 would, but we we definitely might. Uh, been working on uh, in the in the near future on a stable coin. Uh, we we just need to to be very sure that we build something which could on a monetary side could be uh, held stable. And uh, probably as, a, as, an, uh, as, as an enterprise institution, we'll do uh, small steps uh, and we'll be quite slower uh, just adopting, uh, adopting uh, those technologies. That's something which uh, is very interesting. That's amazing. So can you tell us where you will be speaking? Which ne next conference are you going to be attending or speaking at? Basically, in, in Sofia, uh, I'm speaking in a, on a next block uh, conference. Uh, I think it's happening on 12th of April. Um, I'm speaking about uh, the definition of a security token stack. So it, it's a little bit more technical uh, topic. I'll, I'll be discussing like what's already been there in terms of infrastructure for, for security tokens. Um, and, and yeah, basically, I'll try to define the security token stack. Uh, for uh, on, on this conference for 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 the people who will be attending, so yeah. Yeah, it's definitely ahead of. I'm like, what? Well, security token, I'm starting to understand, but stacks and security, I'm like, all right, I'll yeah. have to attend the conference. <laughs> awesome. And uh, where can we find you on social media? Obviously, paysafe.com, and I imagine uh, you guys are on social media. But uh, what about your LinkedIn? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So you can find me on LinkedIn, basically Yasin Yankov on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter as Yasin Yankov. So yeah, those those two are, have been pretty active. Awesome. Uh, I'll make sure to include so, yeah. that on the blog post as well. Yay! Well, thank you for coming on the show. This was great. Very informative and exciting thank you. to thank see. Thank you as well. Thank you for having me. And exciting to see that companies like Paysafe are leading the way when it comes to adoption and uh, making sure that this is something that in merchants or even uh, everyday consumer will start using on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's very exciting and really great news. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, anytime. All right. Take care. Bye. <laughs>